Hey guys, Jason here. In today's episode, we're going to go over how to make a wavy flag using Basic Maker. Now we're going to be using the wavy base pack that I recently posted in the Carver Cove Facebook group. I'm also going to leave a link to this in the description below. It's a free pack. It has four bases in it that are all wavy bases. So feel free to download that and follow along. We're going to start a new model and I'm going to use a width of 30 and a height of 20. I'm using inches and we're referencing the bottom left corner. Okay, once I have my project open, I'm ready to import the base for the relief. Go to Import 3D Model, and I have my Wavy Base Pack open. I'm just going to pick one of the Wavy Bases, and when it opens up, we're going to resize it. Now, I want to make the long side 30. Actually, we're going to make it slightly smaller so that we have some waste material to hold our project down with. I'm making the width 29 inches, and we're going to make the height 19 inches. I'm making this one and a quarter inch thick and let's center that and we're going to paste it down. Okay, once I have my base imported, we're ready to start on bringing in our flag graphics. But before we do that, we're going to set up a tool path to go ahead and cut out the wavy parts. I plan to break my flag down into several tool paths. And I want the first toolpath to cut the wavy flag. So I'm going to go ahead and create a 3D toolpath to cut this out. Now before I do that, I need a boundary because I want to use a selected boundary. Because I do not plan to cut the outside edges out yet. So we're going to go to Vector, Create, and Relief Boundary. I just click Create Boundary. And that's going to give us a border around our relief. I close that. And now we can select selected vector. And we're going to do the inside of that. I need to get a roughing bit and a finishing bit. I'm using an end mill. And we're going to use a quarter inch up cut end mill. We're also going to use a quarter inch taper ball nose for the finishing path. I'm using large bits to try to do this as quickly as possible. I'm going to use a rasta cut at a 45 degree angle and the same thing with the roughing cut. A rasta tool path with a 45 degree angle. We're not going to do any kind of profiling and we are going to let it cut in both directions. I am adding a ramping move. I need to define my material. My material was 1.35, and we're going to leave the excess at the bottom. also need to change my safe Z. I'm not using any clamps, so I'm just going to use 0.2 here. Now that I have this toolpath set up, I'm ready to calculate. Okay, now that that toolpath has finished calculating, we can simulate it to make sure we are getting what we were looking for. And that indeed is our wavy base. Now I'm going to just delete this simulation. And I'm ready to start bringing in my flag graphics. We're going to do that by first going to bitmap. And I'm importing this flag graphics. I just got this off of Google. It's just a picture of a USA flag. If we go over here to our 2D view, what we want to do is vectorize this image. So we're going to use our bitmap to vector tool. And the first thing we want to do is reduce our colors. Now I want to bring this down so that that bottom color remains pink. I want that separate from my flag. I don't want those combined. And what we're going to do here is we plan to carve down the white stripes. We want the red stripes to be raised the white stripes to be lowered, as well as our stars. Those are also going to be lowered. I need to make a vector for the union first. So I'm just going to pick the blue color and click Create Vector. And that created a vector for our union. And it also created a vector for our stars. Now, if we make vectors for the white stripes, it's going to remake those vectors to the stars. And I don't need them twice. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to highlight these stars that I just made. And we're going to just go ahead and delete those. Now when I come to the white color, 
and I create my vectors. It will create using the white instead of the blue. And we still have our union vector, and now we have vectors that go around the white stripes. If I go back to my 3D view, and I click my display material button, and show vectors, we now have the vectors for our flag. Now all we need to do is resize it to our material. And since I have everything highlighted, I can just come over to my transform tool, and now we can transform this to fit our material. Looks like we need to get this union as well. Let's just drag that up. We want to keep it inside of our model. Drag this in, keeping it just inside of our model. Drag this down. So I'll reselect everything and go back to our transform tool. I press T on the keyboard to get the shortcut for that. Drag that down so it's just inside the material and this just inside the material. Now let's check all of our sides. Okay, and now we have our flag resized inside of our material. I also plan to add a Marine Corps EGA or Eagle Globe and Anchor to this portion of the flag. So I'm going to go ahead and import that. Before I do that though, I want to group these vectors together. I'm just going to take all of my stars and we're going to group those. We're going to do the same thing with the inner stripes. We're just going to group those. And now I'm ready to bring in my bitmap of the EGA. But first we need to get rid of the USA flag. We're just going to go up here to bitmap. We need to have the right color. Bitmap and clear. Whatever color is in your secondary slot when you press clear is what color it's going to clear the background. And we want white. I'm also going to go ahead and turn off my vectors so I'm not having to deal with those. And I just turned that off with the light bulb. Now we go to bitmap, import, and I have this EGA. We're going to open that up. And again, we're going to use our bitmap to vector tool, reducing the colors. And this time we can go all the way down to two, just black. And if we use the white or the black, we can create those vectors. And now we have created our vectors for our EGA. And since they're all highlighted, let's go ahead first and move this off of our flag so that we can work on the EGA by itself. I'm going to go back over here to my 3D view and turn my display material back on. I'm just going to delete this border vector. We don't need this. And I can close this. And now that I have my EGA over here on the right where I can work on it, the first thing I want to do is create a border for the EGA to cut out uh, where it's going to sit on my flag. So we're going to take this outside border vector for the EGA, and we're going to use an offset vector. Now I'm offsetting outwards, and we're going to just use radius. And let's start with a 0.2, almost a quarter inch. Actually, let's do an eighth of an inch, 0.125. Perfect. Now it created some extra vectors that I'm not going to need here. This, this, I believe this doesn't belong. Okay. And now that we have that, we can transform this and bring it into our flag and resize it to the size that we want. We'll use the arrow keys to move it around and get it just where I want. Let's see, F9 would center it. And then if I just hold over, something like that. That looks pretty good. Now what I want to do is take my stripes, which are grouped together, and that outside vector that I created, and we're going to weld those together. We're going to use the weld tool. And what that's going to do is create a border for our stripes so that it doesn't run into our EGA. Now I can get rid of this. This is part of that stripe. So this and this are a part of that the stripes. So now I'm just going to group these back together. Now we're ready to give our flag its adjustments. We're going to go up to scale relief and I'm going to pick selected vector then using my arrow we're going to reduce the scale height of the stripes let's turn off our vectors so we can have a look let's go 0.5 okay i like the way that looks let's press apply turn our vectors back on let's select our stars let's bring them down 0.55 looks a little deep in some of those 0.6 we're going to just go with the 0.6 that looks pretty good 
Press apply, turn my vectors back on, and then we need to do our EGA. Just gonna highlight the uh, EGA. Let's turn these vectors back off. And for the EGA, I'm going to move this up so that I'm raising the EGA up. Now, are we, let me turn my vectors back on because it seems like we've got the stripes highlighted. We didn't want that, just the EGA. Now let's try it again, there we go. What I'm gonna do is bring up the EGA so that it matches the stripes and height. So if I turn it to the side, and I can just kind of look at where this match is matching up. It doesn't have to be exact. We're just gonna get it close. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna press apply. And now we have our flag with our EGA. And now we're ready to create our tool pathing. Let's turn our vectors back on to make this easier. Let's select our stripes and our EGA. Create a 3D toolpath, and we're gonna use selected vectors so that we're only cutting out these vectors. For my roughing tool, I'm gonna use an 1 8 inch down cut end mill. And for my finishing tool, we're gonna use a 1 16th taper ball nose. For this, I'm gonna change the Rasta Classic to a zero angle for the finishing bit. And for the roughing pass, we're gonna change this to offset, starting inside. And we're only gonna use the climb cut to give us a better finish. I'm not gonna use uh, ramping moves for this. Everything else should be the same. And I'm gonna press calculate. We're ready to calculate. Okay, and now that that's done calculating, we can simulate our tool paths. That doesn't look too bad. It looks like it could be a little better. Maybe if we use the 132nd on the EGA. Let's make that change and try it again. So I'm gonna change this to the 132nd bit and recalculate. Okay, let's simulate the tool paths again. And this looks a lot better. It's a lot cleaner. Okay, now we're ready for the stars. I'm just gonna highlight my stars. We're gonna create another 3D toolpath with selected vectors. And we don't need a roughing option this time. We're just gonna use a finishing bit. And first we're gonna try a 90 degree V bit to cut these stars. I'm going to try a 45 degree angle so that it's at an angle to these stars. Let's see what this looks like. If I simulate my toolpaths, and those came out pretty good. The corners are nice and sharp and clean. Now we're ready to create a toolpath to cut this out. Go back to my toolpaths, and to cut it out, we're gonna use a profile toolpath. We turn my vectors back on, and we want this border vector. We're gonna be cutting outside of that vector and all the way through our material. We are using sharp corners, and I'm gonna use a quarter inch down cut to cut this out. Also wanna add bridges. They're gonna be a quarter inch each, and that's fine. I'm also adding a ramping move, the smooth path, and if we simulate all of our tool paths, there we have it guys, our wavy flag with basic maker. Now we're ready to save these tool paths and cut this out on the machine. Guys, if you find this content valuable, please hit the subscribe button. Give us a like and share this with someone. And I'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys.